do a quick introduction to Onshape in parametric design um, with a special focus on the sheet metal aspect of it so that we can create sheet metal parts, flatten them into a net, and then export that net into Adobe Illustrator to make a laser cuttable file of that net that we can fold out of Bristol board. So when you first log into Onshape, you'll see a window similar to this. This is uh, the window where you'll see your previously opened projects and stuff like that. Of course, if this is your first time, yours will be empty. But the way we begin in Onshape is we're going to create a new document. And a document is just what it sounds like. It's a place where we organize ideas related to a single project. Typically, you might have several parts within a single document. Um, even for this project, you might do that. But a document pertains to a project. So let's go ahead and create that. And we will call this Sheet Metal Practice, um, as that's kind of what we're making in this video. So when you open a new document in Onshape, you're going to see three planes. These are theoretical planes. They're not uh, physically a part of what you're designing, and they extend theoretically forever in each of their directions. So even though they look like they have finite size, this is just a theoretical front plane, the top plane, and the right plane. And they help us have a basis, you know, since we're working in three dimensions, for the way that we're going to organize and attach things to or about our origin for starting to work in parametric design. Um, so in Onshape, you can two-finger click to rotate around, and if you ever accidentally end up in a weird rotation, this little box up here will help you to find, uh, get your head on straight again. So if you click on front, it'll write itself to the front view. If you click on one of these little corner spots, it'll move itself to a isometric view or near isometric view where you can get back to that familiar view. You can always return to a view similar to this one also by hitting shift 7. So if you ever end up really turned around you can hit shift 7 or just click on that corner to get to this familiar top, front, and right view. So in parametric design you kind of go back and forth between creating 2D theoretical sketches and then pulling those into three dimensions in one of a couple ways. So there are something called an extrusion, um, which is kind of like an extrusion in real life, right? where you take a shape and you pull it out into a dimension to give it depth. There's a revolve, which is where you take a sketch and you spin it about an axis. So if you wanted to create a donut, you might have a circle and then spin it about the origin and you'd end up with a donut. Um, and there are a couple of others, one of which we'll use in this video. So if we wanted to make a really basic net, let's start maybe with a cube. What we might do is click once on the top plane to select it. And you'll notice, unlike other programs in Onshape, if I click a second time on something else, now they're both selected, even though I wasn't holding shift. If I ever accidentally select something I don't mean to, I can always click on it again to deselect or hit spacebar to unselect everything. So again, this is how you get your views righted if you accidentally get your orientation messed up. And spacebar will deselect things that you've accidentally selected. So I'm going to select the top plane and click this sketch button up here to make a new sketch. Now I like to look straight on at what I'm sketching and so I'm going to hit the N key on my keyboard and that's going to make it normal to the sketch or directly head on. So if we're making a cube we need to start with a rectangle, more specifically square. So under here I've got two ways of defining a rectangle in terms of its corners or in terms of its center in one corner. That's the one I'm going to use so that we can center our square at the origin. So I'm going to let that snap, click once, and then I'm just going to move my mouse around, and if I click again somewhere else, I've now created a, a rectangle. And this rectangle is blue because it's not well dimensioned. Its center point is defined, but I haven't told it how tall or wide to be. And so I can do a couple of things. Under here, there are constraints for all kinds of stuff. If I hit E, I'll get the equal constraint, and I can click on two sides, and now they're locked to being equal in dimension. That's going to make this a square. It's still blue, though, because I haven't set a square of what side length. So if I hit the D key on my keyboard, that stands for dimension, and I click on one side, then I click somewhere else, I can now type in uh, some dimensions for my square. So I'm going to go with realistic dimensions that we might actually cut this out of Bristol board. And so maybe we were thinking of making it 5 or 7 centimeters on the side. So I'm going to type in 7 cm for centimeters and hit enter. So now it's black because this square is well defined. It's, it's uh, defined as having equal side lengths. It's centered here and it has a side length of 7. And so what I can do is rename this sketch to call it square. And I believe your sketch panel is probably hanging out right here by default. 
So we'll call that square and hit check. So now if I hit shift seven, you can see in my planes, I've now got this little square sketch. That's um, fine, but it's two dimensional. So to bring it into the third dimension, I'm gonna click once on the word square and then use this extrude tool. And this is how we're gonna bring it into 3D. Now I know my square was seven centimeters on the side. So to make it a cube, I need the depth to also be seven centimeters. I'm gonna check symmetric so that it stays completely centered about the origin. And then we'll call this cube for our first extrusion. And so now I have a cube that exists with three dimensions. Not super interesting, but it is exciting that in just two steps we can create something. So I'm gonna hit shift seven to center my views. I'm also gonna hit P to hide those planes. You can always bring them back by hitting P again. Um, but now that we've got our square centered, we don't really need those planes. What we wanna do instead um, is, I'm gonna actually hold shift, or how do I move? I can't remember, maybe it's control. Control, yep, if I hold control and drag with two fingers, I can drag my cube around without rotating. So control and two fingers to move it out of the way. And then you'll notice down here there's something called part one. That's this part as it exists in 3D now that we've extruded it. So if I right click on where it says part one, I can rename that and I'll call that cube as well. And with cube selected, I'm gonna come up here and it might be in a slightly different location depending on your screen size, but I'm looking for the sheet metal tool. Um, so let's see, is it down here? Mm -hmm. Oh, right here. So the sheet metal model uh, is a button that when I have a part selected is going to bring me into another part of the interface where I can say, hey, this theoretical cube, I want it specifically to be made out of sheet metal. So I'm going to click the sheet metal model button and you'll notice a couple things change, right? I've got this new option to convert, extrude, or thicken and then a couple of other options about my material. I want to start by, since we're using Bristol board, for thickness I'm going to type in 0.15 millimeters and the same thing for the bend radius, 0.15 millimeters. Um, and those are pretty good settings for cutting something out of Bristol board. It tells us that our material is very thin. It's not like thick gauge metal where we've got to leave a big radius for it to bend. Um, and so what I want to do also is click this button over here that's a sheet metal table and flat view. So if I click right now, you'll see, yes, it's prepared to make this cube out of sheet metal. And let me get it back in view by clicking this and then zooming out. But it's not very clever. So it's just going to cut six sheets and leave it completely up to you to assemble them. Now that to me is not a very effective net for a cube. And so what we're gonna wanna do is click on edges or cylinders to bend. And now we're selecting edges one at a time. So I'm gonna click once on this edge and you'll notice that it combines, it's really hard to see here, but it's actually combined two of these. So now instead of six parts, we have five. And if I keep clicking around the base of my cube, you'll see it starts to assemble them into a net. And so the most standard net for a cube probably looks something like this. Now you'll see that I've gotten close, but the top is still a separate piece. So if I choose, you know, I've got a bend coming up this way, one of these other edges, I'll get what's recognizable as a really standard net for a cube, right? Maybe I don't want that edge, maybe this one. Doesn't ultimately matter. These are more or less identical nets for a cube. There's a couple of other ways you could net a cube, but that one looks perfectly fine for now. And so I'm gonna hit check. And now we've got our cube is actually gonna be made out of quote sheet metal. In reality, it'll be just Bristol board. But I can come over to this flat view and right click on it. In this option, export DXF or DWG of flat pattern. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna take this net and actually export it into a format that Adobe Illustrator can open. And from Adobe Illustrator, we can send it to a laser cutter. And so I'm gonna click that export. And then when this dialog pops up, let's go ahead and rename it with our name. So I'm gonna call this Greist cube net. Um, you'll want something descriptive there so that when you bring them to the laser cutting, uh, I'm, I'm sure whose part is whose and what shape it's supposed to be. DXF is fine for the format. We don't need to change the release or the option. We wanna make sure we have this Z, Z height to zero box checked and include bend center lines. That's really helpful um, for actually assembling your net in the real world because we can score those with the laser cutter so it folds neatly and then include visible sketches. So we want that checked as well. So we're gonna choose export. In a moment here, we should see it download. And then what we can do is open up Adobe Illustrator. This may take a second to open, but we're gonna get that file prepared for laser cutting and there's not much work left for us to do. That net is nearly ready. 
Um, but what we don't want to do is cut along our bend lines and then end up with six pieces. And so we're going to open up from downloads. So on my computer, we'll wait for downloads to pop up. We're going to open up the DXF file we just saved. So we'll say open and it's going to ask us about our units. Now my units in Onshape are set to centimeters. And so I'm going to say scale by one unit equals one centimeter. And so we'll say OK. And this is going to make it the real size that I dimensioned it to be. Um, you can always resize things uh, kind of loosey-goosey on the laser cutter, but this is a little easier. And so you may find that when you open yours, it's hanging off of the white artboard. Um, and so what we want to do is first go to Object, Artboard, Fit to Artwork Bounds. And that's going to make sure everything fits perfectly within the bounds of our artboard and Illustrator. Then we're going to hit Command-0 to fit everything on the screen. So that if it came in zoomed in like that, Command-0 will make it so you can see all of it. And so our net has these little dashed lines where we're supposed to fold and these external lines where we're supposed to cut. So we're going to click and hold Shift and click to select each of our fold lines. And with them all selected, I'm going to right click and say Group. And now I'm going to go change their color to just something other than black. I like to choose a bright red. That's really easy to spot. So I know that everything I want is one color and everything I want to cut is another. It's really only important that our cut lines be different in color from our fold lines. You'll notice there's a little bit of a funny meeting here. This is actually to allow for some bend radius in your material. This is way less important with Bristol board, but with metal, those little reliefs become really important. So this file is now ready for laser cutting. My last step is I need to say File, Save As. I'm going to save it on my computer or Creative Cloud, however you see fit. We'll call this GreistCubeNet.ai. That looks great. That's an Adobe Illustrator file. We'll hit Save, hit OK, and that file is ready for laser cutting. So what you'll do is go ahead and upload that to the Google Drive folder where we're going to source these from or get it to me in some fashion, um, and then we can open this right up, send it to the laser cutter. We've already got settings ready to go, um, and it will cut around and then score these, and it folds right up into a neat cube.